Just over 100 years ago, Japanese artist Kane Yamamoto published a book that explained his ideas for teaching children to explore, be creative, and express themselves through art. Known as the Jiyuga Method, which loosely translates as Freedom Method, it was met with enthusiastic support, but also strong opposition. See, up until that point, most classrooms used very traditional teaching methods and materials. Two teachers that supported Kane's ideas invented an oil, wax, and pigment stick that allowed students to experience bold color, the immediacy of drawing, and the expressiveness of painting all at the same time. It was the very first oil pastel. In the spirit of Jiyuga, I have an experimental technique to demonstrate today, one that explores texture, color, and light using oil pastels. Foil and oil begins with a collage. These high gloss metallic foil papers are available in an assortment of colors, in sheets and on rolls. They have a slick coated side and also a flat paper side. There's also origami papers available in smaller metallic squares and in stunning pearlescent and opalescent varieties. These can be cut into smaller pieces in order to distribute them across the classroom. The collage will need a surface. I like to use illustration board because it doesn't warp and it has a paper surface that glue easily adheres to. It comes in larger sheets that are easy to cut down with a paper cutter or with strong scissors. You can make a simple sketch of a subject, just as I've done here, or just start building the collage. We'll cover the entire surface with a variety of foil papers. You can use scissors to cut certain shapes. I'm gonna start here in the sky and cut cloud-like shapes. As you cut your shapes, or you can cut a few at first and then glue them down, make sure to cover all the way to the edges and press down with your fingers. You can also tear paper shapes, leaving a decal edge, and overlap your pieces. You can create texture before applying a piece by folding it or bunching it. Crinkle it and then unfold it and you'll have some great texture ready to go. Once the collage is built, you can emboss, actually deboss, lines and patterns into the foil paper, just as you would with tooling foil. The illustration board is nice and soft, so you can press lines right down into it. You can emphasize some of the main areas, add texture such as bark on the tree, perhaps a, a pattern in the sky, few extra branches on the tree. You can even add area of stippling. Now I'm using a tool that's made specifically for this purpose. It's a Fiskars embossing tool. It has a ball tip on either end, a large one and a small one. You could also use a wooden tool, such as the scratch tool. Now the point here is a little sharp and it might rip the paper, so you might want to dull it a little bit first, simply by rubbing it against some sandpaper. Let's take a look at this piece that I've already done, created the debossing on. You can see all of the different lines in there. Now we're going to add oil pastel right over the top and watch what happens. So over here on the hillside, I'll just rub the oil pastel over the top and you can see it skips right over the lines that are debossed and the metallic shows through. Let's put a little bit up here in the sky as well. Oil pastel creates a matte area which contrasts with the shininess and the metallic glow of the foil beneath it. Try a few different colors. I'm gonna go into the tree here Create some darker areas. Now you could also use a paper blending stump to kind of fade out some of the colors, blend them together, smooth them out a little. Use a light touch so that you're not pushing that color down into the recessed lines. Don't be afraid to apply it thickly. And I wanna stress this point because I really find that there's a tendency to not want 
to use much oil pastel because it looks as if you're covering up your really beautiful paper collage there. It's still there. And now I'm gonna show you how you can bring it back. A modeling tool can be used to scrape away some of the oil pastel. See, there's that glow underneath there again. So you create highlight areas and leave the darker areas to create shadows. I like to use a variety of tools to create different lines. Just pull it away, revealing that surface underneath. Now there's a name for this technique. It's called scraffito. In Italian, that means scratching. Now if you feel like you've ended up pulling too much color away, then you can always go back and add a little bit more oil pastel over the top of it again. And you can also double emboss, going back with your embossing tool and create more embossed lines, pressing down, add more oil pastel. Now we've got two colors going and scruffito scratch lines over that again. Just keep going until you feel as if you've finished your piece. Let's take a look at another image that's finished and look at the variety light, dark, shiny, matte, raised, deboss. It's all very dramatic and it looks way more complex than it actually is. Like most student grade oil pastel paintings, the surface will remain soft even weeks from now. That's because these pastels are made with mineral oil and wax. Now it could be framed and displayed behind a piece of glass or it could be fixed with a spray or a paint-on varnish that'll help provide a coating that helps protect it from damage and dirt. There are pastels that are made with a higher quality linseed oil or safflower oil. Um, they cost more, but they do dry over time to a more durable finish, kind of like an actual oil painting would be. You just use those in the same way, applying them and then creating scraffito effects through those oil pastels. For more info, a materials list, and more, visit dickblick.com lesson plans or scan this QR code.